My name is Michael Young and I'm a lawyer who handles contested estates. In this video, I want to talk about common law marriage claims, which I find arise frequently in the contested estates that I handle. If you find this information helpful, please hit the like button on the video and feel free to subscribe to my videos about contested estates and life insurance disputes. A very common issue in a contested estate is a claim of common law marriage in which someone claims to be a spouse of the decedent in which they, if they are a spouse, would entitle them to certain assets and legal rights. Uh, before I go into the elements and the po most important element, I want to mention a common misconception that I hear. People will call me and say, Mike, uh, we weren't married, but we had a common law marriage. Or my brother wasn't married to that woman, but they were common law. Well, a common law marriage is, the, is a marriage under Texas law. It has the same legal force and effect as a marriage that was established formally, civilly, where you would go to a justice of the peace or a priest or a minister and have a formal ceremony with a marriage license and all that. Uh, it's the same. The, the difference is establishing the proof of it. If you go get a marriage license and you have a civil ceremony, and the documents are signed, then that is formal proof of the marriage. Nothing else needs to be established. With the common law marriage, there are certain elements that have to be met before you can prove the marriage. But once it's proven, it is the same as a formal civil marriage. So what are the elements of a common law marriage? Well, first of all, it's that the people agreed to be married, the couple. They lived together as husband and wife and they represented to others in the community generally as husband and wife. And it's this last element that is the most important because that is the one that's most disputed. It's typically not difficult to prove, particularly when uh, one, one of the couple has passed away for the surviving uh, person to say, oh yeah, we agreed to be married. And then it's not difficult for them to prove that they live together. But plenty of people who are not married live together. So the fight typically then becomes over whether they represented themselves generally in the community as husband and wife. And that is what lawyers call generally a fact-intensive determination. And uh, you know, when I'm representing someone who's trying to establish a common law marriage claim, I will get declarations, affidavits from people who knew them to uh, affirm that. You can look to see if they filed taxes as a married couple, whether they listed themselves as married, married on health care applications or applications to the doctor or, you know, next of kin. Those types of things would provide proof. And conversely, if I'm representing somebody who's opposing that claim, we would also get declarations from friends, family, uh, people in the community who knew them to say that they did not refer to themselves as husband and wife. That requires a substantial amount of work. It requires a lawyer who is familiar with the elements and who has handled those types of claims to evaluate that and to go get the evidence uh, regarding the claim. And typically, if you, if you do a pretty good job of getting that evidence, if you're supporting a claim, then you can typically survive summary judgment and have a court find that it's a fact issue that would go to a trial to determine uh, whether or not there was a marriage. If you're involved in an estate in which the common law marriage is an issue, uh, feel free to give me a call.